There's an interpretation to our films uh, that there, there are lesbian undertones. It's a fine line. Personally, I put that out of my head, um, not for any reason other than I just wanted it to my film specifically, and I think all the films, they're about true love and unconditional love. Sisters united in blood, together forever. To complicate things further, the third entry to the series, Ginger Snaps Back, abandons these issues in favour of themes linking race to horror. There's definitely a race angle to, to Ginger Snaps Back um, in that we did a little bit of research and, and there was an idea that uh, because in, in early Canada there really was no um, white women uh, that far west. And a lot of the, so a lot of the fur traders um, ended up marrying and having children with native women. I think there's definitely a connection between woman as other and um, racial other in Ginger Snaps Back. Um, this is particularly exemplified through the idea of um, racial mixing being quite terrible, particularly for the priest. No longer can we cast our seed into the dusky heathen bitch. Obviously this idea of contamination then converts over to woman as being contaminated, obviously through her association with the werewolf. <laughs> With Ginger Snaps Back, director Grant Harvey subverts the traditional logic of sequels by relocating the two heroines to a 19th century outpost. I like the idea of taking a sequel and flipping it on its head and, uh, and not sort of following a traditional sort of sequel pattern. In Ginger Snaps Back, there's this real sense that they're going out to kind of break the frontier and that they're, that, that they're really overturning all the stereotypes of Victorian womanhood. And I found that very exciting. Good Christian women need fear nothing. I'm not afraid. Oh, yes, you are. While Ginger Snaps Back clearly emphasizes the cultural dimensions of terror, the entrapment of the two heroines in an all-male domain does allow for the extension of some gender themes familiar to the series. These men, in their very you know, macho male way, have tried to figure out a sense of order in this chaos that they're stuck in with these werewolves. Um, and they've, they've they sort of fallen back to this, this sort of militaristic way of dealing with it. We don't ever open a gate for anyone we don't know, do we? You bloody idiot. It's nearly night, but we were looking for shelter. Uh, and then we introduce the female, um, the female side of things, and it, it, it unravels uh, what the men have <laughs> sort of set out to do. <coughs> Ladies, we should eat here more often. I think that Ginger Snaps Back is definitely moving towards more of a radical separatist um, stance than the first film. I can see how some people might regard that as, as a kind of form of or analogous to radical feminism, that this is a separatist thing. The women, the girls are no longer in conflict with one another, which they were in the first film. But now there, there is solidarity between them and they go off and they're going to conquer. In order to assess the possible meanings behind the sexual imagery contained within the Ginger Snap cycle, an all-female research project was mounted which tested audience responses to the first film. The way we're doing this Ginger Snap project is by selecting a small sample of a bigger audience, a focus group if you want, show them the film and have them fill in a short six-question questionnaire uh, to, uh, in which we can analyze how they relate to messages of, of, of lesbianism or of feminism that are buried in the film. The study was conducted at University College Northampton and was project managed by audience study specialist from the University of Wales, Aberystwyth. And while the study of horror film imagery and symbolism has become commonplace, the research project was innovative in that it sought to explore one of the genre's most important and neglected aspects, its potential female audience. The methodology for the audience research asked the female target audience a number of key questions, such as who they identified with within the series, issues of sexual identity, as well as key terms associated with the Ginger Snap series. I thought it was like really original and really creative. It was quite gory, which is always yeah fun. <laughs> <laughs> but did it for me, really. 
For the first audience study of its kind, the Ginger Snaps project reached some intriguing conclusions. It's all about that kind of physical transformation that's, that's about moving from a kind of teenager to, to adulthood. I like this whole um, conflict between masculinity and femininity and basically castrating men. I mean, Ginger is actually having a tail on the end, so yeah, I loved it. And the main subtext I identified is that of a transition from teenage girl to uh, adult woman uh, described sometimes as a change with an inference towards solidarity and feminism. Yes, I do think Ginger Snaps is um, feminist. I think Ginger Snaps is a feminist horror movie on the same levels. I mean, otherwise they wouldn't have chosen two sisters as like the main characters. It just deals with a lot of um, issues that concern, that relate to women. The second major conclusion of the research is that no one identified lesbianism as a subtext to the whole film, but lesbianism was identified as a subtext to a part of the film, in particular the killing of the janitor. Oh, fuck. It feels so good, Bridget. It's, it's like touching yourself. The little tiny little hints that just kept dropping in, like when she almost killed the janitor and then she did. Yeah, and she the, said things. The proximity like... between each other. <laughs> you love it. She come for the ride. A little scratch. Swap some juice. We'll be our own pack like before. So aspy. I think there is a slight lesbian like subtext. There's a hint of it, but then you can construe lesbianism, you can construe homosexuality in a lot of relationships in films that aren't necessarily there. The third main conclusion of the research was that you don't necessarily need to consider yourself to be an experienced horror viewer to enjoy this film. I've watched a few horror films, but I wouldn't really say I was an experienced viewer. I wouldn't say I was an experienced horror viewer. <laughs> Um, I don't consider my, myself at all being into horror movies at all. The fourth major conclusion of the research was that uh, the majority of our focus group saw Bridget as their favourite character and associated this favourite character with um, a coming of age and a togetherness, a much more softer side than Ginger. Bridget, for example, she was the hero, she was trying to rescue her sister. Of course, I mean, most people probably prefer Bridget because she's kind of fighting herself out of her sister's shadow. I would identify with Bridget because that's how initially I was at school. She's the person I was, but Ginger is the person I wanted to be. By updating established myths around the werewolf to include female concerns, the Ginger Snaps films have extended the popularity of the horror genre to a wider range of viewing groups. And while the political and sexual issues raised in the cycle may remain contested, they also reveal the power of horror cinema to evoke our most primal sexual fears. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.